welcome on in dragon folk we have another fantastic clash bash league video for you we are tying up our game here with henry over at the clash bash league we have our last game here if you have not seen the other two games i suggest going to check them out i'll probably have a link somewhere up there for one of the games probably the game that starts it and you guys can just watch for those games as time goes on. Check them all out. They're all very, very great games, and it really kind of shows what the Clash format is like. But now, for this game, I do want to make it extremely clear as a warning before we get into it. Our Clash League is specifically stated that if you win with a hero, you can't use it in your next match. And that is kind of how it is. But if you lost with the hero that that was in that match then you can still use that hero or you can choose to switch heroes into your second match if you want to well this is our tiebreaker match both of us instead of choosing dromai into ko which is what this match should have been dromai versus ko berserker runt because henry lost with ko berserker runt but won with his Levaya. I won with my Ira, but lost with my Dromai. So it should be Dromai versus KO Berserker run. Instead, it's actually Ira versus Leviah. I don't know where we went wrong in our thinking of our matchup. I think we just thought like switching heroes and doing whatever. As long as it wasn't the same matchup in a, in a, in a row, we were kind of fine with it. But the rest of the matches will be more specific towards the actual rule sets. I think we were just confused in, in what we had set up and we were just trying to throw games together as quickly as possible. But anyway, like I said, I'm on Ira. My opponent is on Levaya. Let's go ahead and get into the match and see exactly what these two heroes have against each other in the Clash format. All right, getting into our game, we are going against Leviah here. It looks like I don't change anything out of my deck. It's pretty much the same as our last game into KO Berserker run, except Leviah looks like they're actually running something completely different. Bone Basher is not something I expected in Leviah. It's essentially just a two attack deal four damage, but as far as not having to do anything with blood debt, it's pretty good. So. I nor I would probably have played something a little bit different, but luckily as a ninja, I get to go second, so I just get to block out efficiently and come in with some stuff here. Now, I get to just keep doing the normal Kadachi nonsense here. I decide to pitch away the Flick Flack. Again, we are just going to be trying to put on as much pressure as we possibly can, going ahead and swinging with these Kadachis, presenting this three damage across several different chains is really powerful. Surging Strength then coming in for six. They're going to get a double block off of that, which is going to really, really turn off a lot of Levi's turn. I then get to come in and I'm going to play Bonds here also. So pretty strong turn. I uh, really get to push out a lot of damage here, but I don't get to have anything in my arsenal, which is kind of bad if my opponent ends up wanting to play some kind of really powerful, uh, you know, turn. Now, I only had a blue Flick Flag in hand, but now I've got two yellow flick flags and a red flick flag. This doesn't do a whole lot for me. This bone basher is coming in for five because of the might token and has go again because of the agility. But my opponent doesn't really have anything they can do otherwise outside of popping their bark bone and trying to go for whatever's in their arsenal. So they just pass here. I get to do the same thing where I just play Kadachi and then play Kadachi and then continue on with my turn. I want this Flick Flack to go into my arsenal, or I want Razor Reflex to go into my arsenal. Either or, but I definitely want to push damage here. If I recall, what my con what my idea here is, is that if I let Leviah get to Blasmafet, then they get a huge amount of value. But if I get them past 13, they will die really, really quick. And uh, then they'll have to worry about things like just playing Leviah Redeemed. But I, my whole goal is trying to push past that. They're going to try and defend until they get enough cards in their 
uh, Banish Zone for Blood Debt to go ahead and get them into Blasma Fett, uh Levi Consumed. This is just six. I don't really care that much about it, but I definitely still want to block it out because I am a little bit more of a defensive deck anyway, and that was their only thing they did. I then get to just casually just Kadachi Kadachi. I have a Reflex in Arsenal. I don't know if I want to play the Reflex because as much as I like the Reflex, I want to save it towards till like the end of the game. But at this very moment, I see I have an opportunity to where I can reflex uh, the Kadachi and I don't do it. And I should have done it because that would have put them at 13 or lower than 13 and they would have not been able to do Leviya, uh, Leviya Bla or <laughs> Blast Buffet Leviya Consume, sorry. But I'm also realizing that they don't have anything in their Banish Zone. So I'm wondering what this is. Like now, after looking at this video now, they don't have anything in their Banish Zone. And they haven't played a single card that has removed things to their Banish Zone. Which makes me think that this is more of a, like, strict... Uh, like I don't know, like, a just a different build altogether. But they go ahead and they play Grasp. And they're going to block out a couple of that damage. I'm not able to bring them down past uh, 13. And they now have three cards with Blood Debt. But Blood Debt is turned off for the turn. So they're either going to now they have six cards with blood debt but blood debt is turned off for the turn i decide to just like take some damage here because i really want to pop off on my next turn and bring them down past 13. 13 is like a really really powerful threshold for them and i'm trying to just make sure that i can go ahead and present enough damage to where this happens now why in the world i played one two punch oh because i had a jilly token that's right silly me I want to clash, I think. Um, I think that's what happened there. So I ended up getting an agility token, and that works out super well in our favor. So I just get to come in with a one-two punch. I then get to choose what I want to do. My opponent takes the damage going down to 12. So now they are below 13. And now I just get to come in with stuff. In a situation like this, now Whirling Blossom's coming in for three. I'm trying to get the additional cards. My opponent obviously is not going to let this hit. This is just one of those cards that I like. I like Whirling Mist Blossom, but it doesn't do enough. And, and you have to play it with an attack reaction. Otherwise, you are going to lose out on a lot of stuff. So now the situation here is really weird because I had the one floating still from... I don't even remember what. Um, oh, from the vest. And so I was like, how am I going to do this? And uh, it turns out that I was meant for Descendant. And uh, if I attacked with Hidachi, I wouldn't have given it go again. So now I'm just coming with a whole bunch of stuff, just really trying to plow through. It was quite a big damaging turn. Very, very happy with how it turned out. My opponent is now at 10. I'm at 7. I think about destroying the mask here because... Then I can go ahead and draw a card. I draw into a Whelming Gust Wave. Doesn't do me anything here besides one. But I'm just going to arsenal it and hope for the best. My opponent comes in with a Slaughtering Hunger Beast. Or Hungering Slaughter Beast. <laughs> slaughtering Hunger Beast. I am just comfortable blocking this pretty well. I do have a blue zero in my hand and a Whelming Gust Wave. So I can always just go ahead and just comfortably block this out. But I'm going to keep the bleed out in my hand for the case that I might be able to play it for free. Anytime a dagger does damage, it takes one cost off of a bleed out. So if my opponent is going to take those, uh, then I get to go ahead and come with the bleed out for free. So bleed out's going to come in for free. That is a four go again. No on hit or anything, but it is nice to have. Four go again. I'm definitely going to want to block it. Get some damage off. I'm just going to hit them with the Whelming Gust Wave, I believe, because there's no reason. Never mind. I don't do that. Um, so Whelming's still in my hand. I guess I'm just waiting for the perfect opportunity, maybe for like a, a Bonds or a Surging or something to do to do something with it. But Hungering Slaughter Beast is going to come in for seven. Now, this is where it gets kind of interesting. I'm going to like super block here because I at least just want to keep a blue. And as you can tell, my opponent's blood debt count is getting pretty high. 
obviously they're going to do their best to get all these cards out of their uh out of their graveyard because if they don't if they're not able to destroy things for blood debt then they lose but what i don't realize here is that levi redeemed is very much so a card and you need to have i believe 13 blood debt cards in your uh in your banish zone in order for levi redeemed to become active uh, Leviah already has less than eight. I want to say that Leviah Redeemed has eight life. So Leviah Redeemed will come in and be able to do some stuff as is. But my opponent's trying to figure out where exactly the best line is for it. Dread Screamer is going to be able to banish those cards into the uh, into the banished zone. And they get to have go again. This now gives them enough to be able to power through on their next turn. They have four go again, and they pulled a extra two resources from the Barkbone Strapping. Being at six, I'm not very comfortable. I have two two blocks in my hand, and I just don't really like that. So I'm going to try blocking out as efficiently as I possibly can here. I want to keep. I wanted to keep a blue in hand that was a zero cost, but I think I just. I don't have it, right? So this next turn is a little weird, but they're gonna go and play Howl. They have exactly 13. They're trying to sequence it. So they're gonna play Howl. Howl isn't gonna do much. They're gonna come in with a writhing, a, a writhing Beast Hulk. And Writhing Beast Hulk is the Dominate Levia card. Uh, so it's coming in for nine dominate and unfortunately I can only block four here with a flying kick and a, or a turn to tempo and I can block four and go down to one. Now that sucks really bad because now they get to pop into Revi Levi Redeem. They gain life because they were below eight. So now they're at eight life. And the only thing I can do is I can pitch to attack with a uh, harmonized Kadachi. This is a big fault on my end. I can't really do anything here in this regard. They have an agility token. They're pretty set up for their next turn. And of course, what's the one card that's going to take me out here? They get to smash back. They get to boneyard. And now we're sitting at six go again. The only other thing they can do is bone basher, which they're definitely going to do. Coming in for four damage. I have to block with both of the cards in my hand, otherwise I die. And this is just kind of the, the death flail. In this case, I can only do a couple of things. I should have at least presented the Whelming Gust Wave there, but maybe I wanted to keep it hidden. I feel like keeping it hidden is definitely the better bet. But here we go. They get to come in. Levi redeemed. None of their stuff. Uh, cards they have lose blood debt, so just, she doesn't have to worry about blood debt anymore. But the agility token or the agile, agile windup is going to come in for seven go again. And again, this is just one of those situations. I don't have things that block for three. I have two be like waters that block for two. So it blocks out seven exactly, but one more six power attack and I'm dead. They barraging beat down to get rid of my last card in hand. And they come in with a bone basher to take me out for game. That is the power of Leviah redeemed. So yeah. That is that is pretty much it. The game ends there. Uh, it is very, <laughs> it's very rough. Uh, the the writhing beast Hulk dominate into me was insane. And I think I just ran into another situation where I expected this Leviah to be exactly like his Leviah previous that I had fought with uh, Dromai, but it was nearly not the same. There were several cards in there that were completely different. It was a fully complete different build and it just didn't feel the exact same. So uh, I really got bamboozled with that. And then my big thing during the actual game is I swore I had the win when uh, I was able to get them past 13. When I got them past 13, I was like, this is it. We got this easy mode. They're not going to be able to transform. It'll be fine. But Leviah Redeemed is still very much so a card. They were able to curate exactly 13 cards into their uh, Banish Zone with Blood Debt in order for Leviah Redeemed to become active. 
and uh, decided to come on through with the win. It was incredibly powerful, very, very good version of Levia, very different. Again, I do believe the Demi Hero proves to be very powerful in this format. Is it going to be best deck? I'm not too sure. I'd have to go ahead and check it out myself, but it does seem very viable. Having the uh, contingency plan of just, oh, okay, I'm not doing super great, transform. Uh, and especially in a low health format where if you just get enough blood debt dealt to you and you go down to 13, you transform. I think that's, you don't have enough ammo in your banish zone normally at that time to do something like that, but it is incredibly powerful when you are transforming into Levi Redeemed, you get, you get, or not Levi Redeemed, into uh, Blasma Fett. You get a lot of ammo there, but Levi Redeemed does have to, to you know, they, they've all got costs, and I think that's kind of the big takeaway from all this. But Levi ends up taking it into Ira. Again, I've changed my Ira build a lot since that match. As you can tell, having two blocks in my deck made me awful at playing that so i changed things around and i feel like it's in a lot better place now maybe i'll do a, a deck tech for it but you guys let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the ira versus Leviah matchup uh, i personally believe ira is very strong into clash um but with the demi hero i do think that Leviah does have her place i'm not sure where uh, but if she can get properly fatigued it probably won't work out too well in her favor but if she can't and it works out that she's just able to prevent a lot of damage. I mean, the agility tokens that she gets from heavy hitters really do increase her power level, being able to come in with several different six power attack turns every single time, and also then getting those cards from her grave to her banish to be able to target herself as uh, the demi hero would to transform into her new self. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. It's a super fun match. I'm very, very excited. Uh, so lost the lost the match entirely. Uh, so unfortunately, those three rounds I did, I you know I ended up losing it uh, and the tiebreaker, which is sad. But there's always the next one, right? So thank you guys so much. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel as well if you have not already, and also you can become a channel member if you wanted to. Uh, these channel members here, they, they're they they helping the channel out in more ways than I could ever thank them for. So just thank you guys so much for being a channel member for us here at Ash and Wings TCG. And I want to continue to bring you guys more content that you all enjoy, more deck techs, more clash, more commoner, more collection videos, things like that. So if any of those fit your fancy, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you all in our next video. Nerd out.